Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Idiot's Guide to Changing the Oil on a uh, SRT Grand Cherokee. This is our 2017 SRT. So let's get started. Change oil soon light came on the dashboard the other day. If I remember right, you got about 5% uh, oil life remaining when you see that light come on. With these new, new cars, I personally trust the oil change minder built into the computer. I don't think it's there to rip you off or anything like that. Some people are still set on doing 5,000 miles or one year or, you know, whatever interval you choose. That's fine, too. You're going to need seven quarts of oil, synthetic. I... Uh, Kind of, I'm not an oil snob by any means, but I do prefer to use the uh, SRT specific oil from Penn's Oil. Um, that's obviously the only thing that we have that I use that oil in. It's kind of expensive, but uh, I hear it has the special additive package in it that's supposed to help the camshaft. I know this is going to look kind of ridiculous, but... Uh, I'm gonna be using a Motorcraft FL820S as my filter. I don't have a filter wrench for this vehicle. Um, I used set it up so that I could take it on and off by hand. If you need to, use one of the oil filter socket style removal tools. They're sheet metal. I don't have one here to show you. Goes without saying, you're going to need a suitable oil drain pan or bucket. I'm doing this job on ramps today. Uh, you can use jack and jack stands, or if you're fortunate enough to, if you're fortunate enough to have a lift, you probably don't need a corny video like this. 13 millimeter six point socket for the drain plug. I can get you all down into the action here. There we go. So our drain plug is right here. Oil filter is straight up there. Get my hand right in the way. Um, there is a uh, kind of a built-in funnel slide or oil slide, I guess, if you will to get the oil that drips from the filter down into your drain pan. It's still kind of messy, so try not to make a mess. And like I said, if you had to use an oil filter socket, you would probably use it with a, a ratchet and a short extension to clear the oil cooler hoses. Like I said earlier, I prefer to just try and keep it set up where you can get it tight enough by hand, but still be able to remove it by hand. So let's get this draining. And then while it's draining, we'll go check the uh, catch can. bit of splashing. I prefer to do this hot when I can. Worst case scenario I've done oil changes cold and when I say cold I mean stone cold. Not started at all. The last thing you want to do is uh, for doing an oil change is start an engine for like a minute to do a reposition or whatever in your driveway and then turn it right back off because then you get a bunch of cold oil sitting up in the top of the engine that you're going to be waiting for an eternity to get drained out of the engine. Okay, that's draining pretty quick. So let's go up top side for a second. Okay, so not everybody is going to have a catch can on their Jeep. We happen to have a catch can on there. Is a catch can necessary? 
absolutely not. And also, I don't think you could go oil change to oil change without draining the catch can. On this particular Jeep, I gotta drain this catch can about every 2,000 miles. It's a pretty small one though. It's made by JLT. She is pretty full. Okay, catch can's all cleaned out. I usually try not to clean all the oil off of this because it'll help that O-ring stay lubed up. And we put the jar back on there. Resist the urge to tighten the hell out of this jar. It doesn't need to be very tight if you have one of these style catch cans. If you have a catch can, or don't have a catch can, by all means, fast forward right on past all this. Okay, that is done. Let's go check on our draining. So it's been about two or three minutes and we're just down to a real fine stream. It's up to you to decide how long you wanna wait for draining that all out. Also, some guys, if they're not on a lift, will actually go and put a floor jack on the rear axle or rear subframe and jack the back of the Jeep up to level out the oil pan to get as much old oil out of there as possible. I, I don't really know that that's completely necessary though. On this particular vehicle, I usually wait to change the filter until I'm done with the pan and the drain, uh, drain plug. Trying to do the oil filter while this is still dripping, you just end up getting all oily and making a mess out of the small area we have to work with here. So a lot of times, most of the time, when I have a filter that hangs completely vertical, upside down, I try to fill it up at least halfway full. You don't want to fill it all the way full because you'll just make a mess out of it when you go to put it back in. We can also use some of this clean oil to lubricate the seal of the oil filter. Before anybody asks me what the torque spec is of the drain plug, I have no idea. It's going to be snug, not too tight not loose the seal on this drain plug will last an incredibly long time so you really shouldn't have to worry about replacing your drain bolt so my general rule of thumb is is i will let an engine drain until it starts to go from a stream to a drip and then i'm done tired of waiting and we're dripping Always try and clean up your mess. Any oil that you leave hanging down here just gets dirt and stuff attracted to it. And if you're using a wrench like this, choke up on it if you're not comfortable with tightening the drain bolt up. That's it. If I had to guess, that's somewhere around 20 foot pound, but don't quote me on it. Okay, let's get this filter out of here. And yes, I did pre-break this loose. So now we'll let that drip and drain while stuff is dripping and draining. Always encourage to um, encourage you to take this time to look around, have a look around, look for things that don't look right. Look at your coolant reservoir. Look at your master cylinder, make sure you don't have any missing fluids. Washer fluid, very important around here because we live in rainy hell. All of that stuff seems to be good right now. 
I think we got about 45,000 miles on this thing now. And if you're really impatient, you can go and stick your hand up in there and get this guy done taken out of there, dripping oil all over the place. You also run the risk of dropping it because it is like a grease pig. just fell off in my hands. <clears throat> it does get kind of snarled up in the oil cooler hoses. I had a Wix in there last time. I had one of the Mopar filters. Like I said before, I'm not much of an oil snob or an oil filter snob. I don't generally mix oils unless I have to in emergency. I don't really care what oil filters that I use as long as they're not complete bargain basement oil filters. I did make a little bit of a mess, so I gotta go up in there and clean that up. I just give a little wipe down of the uh, mating surface on the oil filter adapter she looks good just about ready to jam this oil filter up in here another reason not to fill the new filter to the rim is you do have to tip it Just knocking you guys all over the place. I'm gonna use my rag as a little bit of a traction enhancer so that I can tighten this filter up. It's got a little film of oil on it. Tight as I dare make it. Taking a little isopropyl to clean up my mess here. Not the end of the world if you don't clean this up spotless, but the cleaner you make it, the cleaner it'll stay. Dirt loves oil. Okay, so our drain plug is torqued. Our oil filter is tight. Let's go fill the engine back up with oil. Guess I better get my light out from that hole down there. So get yourself your favorite funnel. Make sure it's clean. Doesn't have much dirt in it. I'm gonna take off our fill cap. On the left hand valve cover here. My old man taught me this trick. Use a half of a whiskey bottle. These threads fit a lot of different engines. It's really crazy, but it works, man. And it's almost free. Now it doesn't fit perfectly tight, but the threads will hold the funnel in place well enough. Got a bunch of dirt on the bottom of oil bottles. Make sure we don't knock that loose into the funnel. Dirt is not your friend. Court number two. Somebody's probably gonna ask me how many oil or how many miles that we average on the oil minder before it says to change it at 5% remaining. I honestly really don't know. If I had to speculate though that it's probably going to be right around five or six thousand miles for our driving conditions. This thing sits a fair amount too. It, it really only probably on average gets driven about two days a week. Alright we finished pouring our 
seven quarts of oil in and we put our oil fill cap back on. Um, I thought I'd film some of that anyways, but apparently the camera was off, so you didn't really miss much. Um, anyways, let's go over the reset. So you'll have to have your key on you. We're going to turn the power on. Engine not started. There's our change oil soon. We're going to use the arrow buttons on the steering wheel. I know it's kind of dark in here, but I think most of you know what the arrow buttons look like. Okay. So you need to scroll from whatever uh, screen you usually have your dash on. So our message center. I know I was just on it, but you know, wherever you're at, you need to scroll until you get to right there. And then as it says, hold OK, OK buttons in the middle to reset. All right, we're back to 100%. Obviously, we filled the engine full of oil. Drain bolts obviously in. Oil filters obviously on and tight. We're ready to go ahead and uh, start it up and check for leaks and then get it off the ramps. flashing of the oil pressure low is totally normal. I would be shocked if I didn't see that. I usually leave it on the fuel economy table so I can be sad and happy at the same time. Filter cap is back on and tight. We got our funnel put away. Make sure that we don't have any leaks. If you all have any other tips and tricks on how to do this any smoother, more efficiently, better, whatever the case may be, put them down in the comments below. Tell me what kind of oil you guys like to use. Put that down in the comments below. Obviously, I shouldn't have to say this, but you want to dispose of your used engine oil appropriately. Almost every auto parts store on earth has a uh, waste oil recycling. So we took the Jeep for a drive around the block and got it warmed up pretty good. Brought it back, put it in the garage. I've let it sit for a minute or two or half an hour. Probably closer to a half an hour. We'll go ahead and check the uh, engine oil via the dipstick. And this is probably redundant because if you put in seven quarts, there is no damn reason whatsoever for your engine not to be serviced up properly. But it's good to go ahead and check it so you have a reference point and you can tell in the future when you're checking your oil how much it's gone down if you have any kind of consumption. Some guys will check the front side, some guys will check the back side. We try and get a good look on that reflection. There's a dry spot right there. So, moral of the story is it's probably a sixteenth of an inch above the hash marks. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a reference that you can use for yourself. I'm going to check it one more time. We'll make it so it says engine. 
readable to us. Yeah, so it likes it with engine facing us or the front of vehicle. Regardless, looks really good. I think every once in a while I'll have to add like a half a quart to this thing in between oil changes, but nothing I would consider um, excessive by any means. So that pretty much uh, concludes changing the oil on a SRT Grand Cherokee. I would imagine, like I said at the beginning of the video, that this process would be very similar to uh, any SRT, uh, at least the 392. I'm sure the uh, Hellcat stuff is different. But uh, anyways, if you have any uh, comments, concerns, questions, thoughts on ways to do things better or more efficiently um, what kind of oil you like to use what filter you like to use put that stuff down in the comments I always like to read it and see what people have to say if you think I screwed something up go ahead and let me have at it I, I, I don't or let me have it I don't uh, get offended by that kind of stuff I'm always willing to learn from other people when I can and uh, Hopefully we'll catch you guys on the next video. We got some more Crown Vic stuff coming up and we got some more Corvette com stuff coming up. So we'll see you on that. I think it's just about dinner time. So I'm gonna go get myself something to eat and uh, we'll see you on the next one.